Welcome to Mile High Reefers. I'm Scott Anderson and I'm slowly recovering the big 210 gallon tank. Biggest problem, algae, some sick corals, and aptasia and pest corals. So aptasia and pest corals have always been a battle for everybody. Aptasia, there's some good ways to get rid of them. Peppermint shrimp, hit or miss, burgess, hit or miss, butterflies, hit or miss. In fact, everything seems pretty hit or miss when it comes to Aptasia. And pest corals, that's a whole nother problem. A lot of times we're stuck with just literally cutting them off the rock. So today we're going to talk about a product that I've been using to help get rid of some of my pest corals and Aptasia. But before we do that, I want to remind you all about Weekend at the Wholesaler. That's where I turn hammerhead corals into Mile High Reefers. My store, it's open every other weekend. So check out Mile High Reefers on Facebook and milehighreefers.net for all the latest on that. And yeah, I want to ship here soon. So fingers crossed I can figure that out. I feel like at this point I've tried most of the products on the market, definitely not all of them. Aptasia X is the one I was using. Honestly, never really that happy with Aptasia X. It just didn't seem to kill the Aptasia. In the past I've used peppermint shrimp. Those have worked really well for me. Not always, but for the most part those worked pretty well. I've tried the copper band route and killed a couple of those. Long story on those guys. I've tried calc walter. I've tried vinegar. I've tried all kinds of different ways to get rid of them. And I was talking to my buddy Darren over at Rogue Aquariums and he had a new suggestion that I hadn't heard about. And I guess he'd gotten it from Reef Keeper. Phil over at Reef Keeper has an amazing tank. So when Darren and Phil are trying this product up, I kind of want to try it too because these guys have tanks that you can envy. They are both have fantastic tanks. And in fact, I'll link their channels down below because yeah, great guys with great tanks. And what they are using is this stuff, sodium hydroxide. Now, when I first started looking into sodium hydroxide, I have to admit, I was a little scared of it. And in fact, my first knowledge of sodium hydroxide comes from the movie Fight Club. Remember when Tyler Durden kisses Edward Norton's hand, dumps lie on his hand and they burn the kiss into his hand? Yeah, that's what this is. This is straight up lie. This is a hardcore caustic. When it gets wet, it reacts with the water and can literally give you a chemical burn. So I was a little scared of it. Darren recommended gloves, respirator, glasses, all that. And that's what I started with. Full on glasses, respirator, shoulder length gloves. And that's pretty much what I'm going to recommend you use if you decide to use it. And in fact, I'm not going to even say I recommend you use it. This video is more just me documenting my experience using it because there's enough downside on this product that you're going to want to make up your own mind. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to tell you what I did and the results I got. So to begin with, I mixed up one syringe's worth. So I added a syringe of water to a little shot glass and I mixed it all up. Um, basically, I was trying to get the solution as saturated as possible. So I'd add a little I'd add the water, then I'd add a little bit of sodium hydroxide, mix it in, add a little more sodium hydroxide. First thing I noticed was the water got hot. It got really hot. So as soon as you start adding this to the water, we get a chemical reaction. The water gets hot. So to me, it seemed like it was better to mix it slowly because it releases a ridiculous amount of heat. Like when I was mixing up the bottle that I actually use now, it was to the point where it's like, uncomfortable to hold it. It was like burning my hand. So definitely something to watch is mixing this stuff. It gets super hot. So I was fully geared up, respirator, glasses, shoulder length gloves, 
and I went ahead and started working in the tank. Once it was in a liquid form, I don't think there's any need for a respirator, but glasses still kind of make some sense in case you were to squirt yourself in the eye. I can't imagine sodium hydroxide is going to be good on the eye. That chemical burn's got to be pretty bad. I haven't gotten out of my hands, so I can't tell you how bad that's going to be, but I can't imagine it's going to be good, though. After using it, I'm kind of thinking Fight Club was a little overdramatic, but I really don't know. So I used a normal syringe like you would use to inject a drug or pull blood or whatever. I'm not a doctor, but I put it in, started to inject an Aptasia and witchcraft happens. The clear solution turns almost solid. You get this like powdery stuff coming out. So you get these ball like things that float around the tank, which is concerning because honestly, our corals are filter feeders, right? And now we're feeding this caustic all over the tank. So that's a concern. And then it also puts out like this clear, almost gel stuff. And that stuff is actually what's killing the coral. So honestly, I don't think there's any reason to use the injection style. I think the applicator that, I, that comes with the Aptasia X would more than cover this. But basically, I was started covering the anemones. And amazing things happen. Like they just melted and died, like fast. Like, I've never had a product work this fast that was good for Aptasia. The downside is, is this is a really hardcore product, and it's pretty easy to get it on coral you don't want to get it on. So, it burns anything. You put it on a coral, or you put it on an Aptasia, and it burns that Aptasia. Well, if you have coral and algae, it burns that too. So I've burned out coral and algae with this. And then I'm also seeing Monipora is super sensitive to this. Um, Monis that I didn't think were anywhere near close to what I was dosing were getting some pretty good scarring and striations in it where it had to have gotten something on there. So yeah, this stuff is scorched earth policy. The amazing part is it worked. It wiped out Aptasia in a way that I've never seen Aptasia get wiped out. But this is definitely something I'm going to say is more on that expert only, try it only if you can risk a few corals and things in your tank because holy crap, it's a hardcore product. So seeing how good sodium hydroxide worked at killing Aptasia, and everything else it seemed to touch, I thought, you know, this might be the right product to get rid of my insidious bounce mushrooms. Yes, those teal mushrooms that have been infesting my tank forever, that I've tried cutting off the rock, and really, I can't get rid of them any other way. So I used my old Aptasia X bottle and mixed them up. Um, the goal was to take it to basically max solution and then fill it the rest of the way up with water so it'd be about 50% max solution, right? Well, I got that wrong. You can see we got a little sitting in the bottom of this bottle here, but I mixed up a new batch. So now it's on tap. I can just pull a syringe as needed, which I think is the way to go. You don't want to mix this up every time. In fact, I think once it's in this liquid solution, it's a lot safer easier to use. The liquid, I've gotten a little bit of the liquid on my hand. Like I said, I haven't had the pure caustic on me yet, but I've had a little of the liquid and it was kind of an itchy, burny sensation that I was able to wash off without any real problems. So that was okay. So I'm not too scared of this. Basically, I was able to put this in the tank and start covering mushrooms with it. And I had a big colony on the left side of the tank and a big one right behind that giant green leather. Now, these are corals that have been infesting in my tank forever. Don't worry. I know you guys love these corals and I love them too. There's still plenty in this tank and the nano. But I started taking this to it and it covers them and within a day, they were mostly gone. In fact, 
the one over here, the only survivors were some I literally just couldn't reach. Now, the, dar the downside is, is you got to be super careful because I had some other little colonies in different spots up here. Well, one of them got on my octo spawn. So it was above it and then it falls down. Like this stuff's heavier than the water, so it falls in the tank, fell on my octo spawn. It wasn't there long and it burned the crap out of my octo spawn. As soon as I saw it, I pulled it off, stuck it in front of the power head, start blowing all that off. The damage was done. I didn't lose the head, but it did burn the crap out of the octo spawn. So you really, really have to be careful when using this sodium hydroxide stuff. Like it will burn and kill any coral it gets on. And then managing it is kind of a problem. So I ran this with the pumps on and I'm not sure that's the smartest way to do it or not. My thinking at the time was if it settles on a coral, it'll probably get blown off. And then that gel stuff that goes onto the colonies, that seems pretty solid and stays there. It'll stay on there for about a day and then it kind of dissolves into the water column and comes up. As far as the tank itself goes, I didn't see any real downsides to the tank. This stuff's a really heavy caustic. So it's going to have a really high pH. So I would think if you'd use too much in your tank too fast, you could spike the pH in your tank. I didn't see any issues, but then again, I was only using one syringe a day and there's 450 gallons total water volume between what's upstairs and what's downstairs. So it's been the craziest stuff to use, but I want to make a video on it because it's one of those products that I can't really recommend somebody just go buy, but it's cheap. This bottle was like 10 bucks on Amazon, maybe 12. It was stupid cheap. And it takes out those mushrooms once they colonize like nothing else I've seen. Moniporas are susceptible to it. So if you have encrusting monies that you can't get off, I think this will do the job. But you got major safety concerns that go with it. You've got major concerns to the other coral around what you're working on. So it's a try it if you dare product. I'm not going to recommend people use it unless you fully understand it and do more research than just this video. I've used it twice now. I'm really impressed by the results, but it's something I will be using sparingly in the future. This isn't something I would ever take to pallies. I'm too afraid of pally toxins, right? You take this stuff to a pally colony, you start putting it on top of it, it's going to release all of those pally toxins pretty much immediately. And I don't want that personally. I don't want to die from pally toxins. And I don't want to see what that many pally toxins does to my tank. So sodium hydroxide, have you used it? Let me know in the col comments column how it went for you. And if you do use it, let me know how it goes for you. I'm really interested um, and I'm having great luck with it. So Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Do it. Thanks for watching this episode of Mile High Reefers. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Very good. Dude, you're better at that than I am. I forget the lines half the time. <laughs>